you, it's Chrissy here from The Creative Eclectic. Today we're talking about using your ugly paper. You all know what it's like. We get a beautiful pack of pattern paper and then there's sheets in the paper that you just do not like. They're just not to your tastes or they're just plain ugly. And it doesn't matter which designer or card company you buy from, there's always that one sheet of paper. Okay, so today I'm going to show you several ways to use up that paper. Okay, so let's get started. So first up, we're going to take a piece of pattern paper and an envelope and I don't like either side of this retired paper. Um, well, this side's okay. Not a fan of this side. It's not something that I would use. Um, the rest of the pack I love. It was a forever firm paper that's now retired. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my piece of paper and I've just got an envelope. This is a C4, oh sorry, C6 size envelope, but you can do it with any sort of envelope you like. And I'm just going to grab a marker. Oh, to the other end. My marker's a little bit worse for wear. Gets used a lot. And I'm just going to put my envelope on top of my paper and just draw or trace around the edge. Yeah, my marker's a bit old. I didn't put it in the center, but I'm not particularly worried. So it's very, very light. How about I get a different pen? You can use any pen you like. That one's not working for me today. I'm going to use a highlighter so you can really see where I'm drawing. So try and get it in the middle, not like I did before. Okay. And if you've got a wider piece, that's better. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just drawing. I'm going to have highlighter on my envelope, but that's not okay. That's just for demonstration purposes okay so I've got my highlighted bit and it doesn't matter if you stuff up one aside and I'm just going to cut that around now this is one of the simplest ways you can use your pattern paper And you draw on the wrong side of the paper as well. So, so anyway, so here we go. We can just chuck that into our envelope. Put a little bit of, actually before we tuck it in, tuck it into our envelope. Line it up so it's just underneath that piece there. and just put a bit of glue behind it. Now you might have a die cut that does um, envelope lining, which is really good. But if you don't, this is just a simple way to do it. And be a bit um, generous with your glue. Obviously, a piece of 12 by 12 paper would work, uh, or even 6 by 6. I just had a scrap. Uh, and so we've got a lining in our envelope. It doesn't matter 
that it doesn't line the whole envelope, it just lines the bit that you see. And so then you can fold it like that. And you've got a lined envelope. That's probably not my best work, but you get the, the gist of it, don't you? Okay, so then what else can we do with our ugly paper? Well, you could make bags and boxes and all sorts of things, but we're going to look at some practical ways. So, say for example, you've got a piece of paper like this. this is, I like the back of it, but I've used that a lot, so I don't particularly like the front. Uh, it's, I think it's too bright for my tastes. So what if I wanted to tone it down a bit? I'm gonna take, I've got a piece of scrap here. I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I've got my Whisper White ink pad. Now this is a craft ink, so it is and it needs to be re-inked basically every time you use it. It's much thicker and stickier than a normal ink. So, a classic ink, sorry, that you would use all the time. But you can do this technique with a classic ink. I'm just doing it with this one because um, I want to give you an example so I'm getting my ink pad and I'm just dragging it along my cardstock. So what that does is it just changes how vibrant it is. So it makes it a little bit more subtle. So and what I will do is at the end of this video, I'll show you projects made with each of these things. So you can see what it looks like. And if it, if it gets sort of stuck halfway through, you just blend it. Now, you, it's a messy ink and it's a messy technique. So we're going to set that aside to dry. The thing with craft inks, it doesn't dry straight away. But you can see immediately how different that looks from this piece of paper. Now this was part of, this paper was part of a dragonfly garden bundle or suite um, in last year's, or at the, not last year, the beginning of the year's um, mini catalogue. So see how different that looks. It's, so much lighter. All right, so we'll put that aside. So we've got two ways so far. I have got a, another piece of paper from the same suite. Now this has got, this isn't a color that I would use and it's got lots of, it's just not my style. Anyway, we'll move this out of the way. So I've got a background stamp. So this is dry brush. This is one of my favorite background stamps. So what I'm going to do is get the coordinating ink, which is Blackberry Bliss. Now I've got it here on my bench somewhere. Two. And I'm just going to, so my ink pad, I need a new one. I'm just going to ink up. I haven't even taken it out of the box, okay? I'm just going to ink up my stamp. I've got my pattern paper, so I'm just going to lay it down onto my background stamp. 
grab that piece of scrap that I had before. I'm just going to press that down. I'm not worried that I haven't got it all over because I'll be cutting this down. And you see that it's got some, it's now added a different texture to it. So it looks a bit better. But what if we change that up a little bit more? All right. So let's just wipe off our stamp. And generally, I wouldn't advise to use baby wipes, but um, we're, I'm going to be cleaning all of these afterwards. Okay. Oh, I don't have any packs of baby wipes that are open. All right. So, I'm just going to wipe off this um, stamp and I'm wiping it also with a baby wipe first because it's such a dark colour and if you're using dark colours you're going to get ink over your hands like look at that it's not my favourite thing But I've got some hand sanitizer here. And when you put your hand sanitizer on your hands, it takes a lot of the color out and it's not doing it with this color. Great. <laughs> anyway, so I've wiped off the, most of the color. I've got my chamois. I'll just wipe it off, make sure it's really, really clean. I love these chamois. They are the best invention ever. Now this is a stamping up one. Some people use a really good quality car chamois, but you want to make sure you, if you're using a, something like that, that you don't use one that is um, a fluffy one, that you make sure it's a good quality one. So. I've got another piece of that paper. So I'm going to grab my Versamark ink, wherever that might be. Now I bought it out here. Oh dear. I've got so much stuff on my bench that I just can't see it. Just hold that thought, I'll go and grab some. Okay. So I've got some Versamark ink. I'm just going to ink up this um, background stamp again. Okay, I'm inking it fairly heavily. Again, I'm going to lay my um, paper over the top. I'm just going to rub it. Because it's Versamark ink, I'm not worried about getting the ink on my fingers this time. Okay. Let's make sure it's all pressed down. If you had a roller brayer like this one, use that to press down. Make sure you've got a really good contact with the Versamark ink. Okay, so you can't see the Versamark ink. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some heat and stick powder, which is um, Stamping Up has just bought back. Now, this, isn't an this is like an embossing powder, but not quite. I'll explain in a second. So I'm just going to pour this over my paper, should we do it on this one, 
makes it easier to pour it back in. So it sticks to your Versamark. Wherever your Versamark was, it sticks to. Okay. So you're still with me, I hope. Move that out the way. I'm just going to do this on a cork mat. Right. So now we need our heat gun. Or heat tool, whatever. Don't use a heat gun like what you would in um, the garage. It's not going to work. You'll probably burn the house down. Okay. So, this will be a little bit noisy. Sorry about that. I'm just going to heat this up. You make sure it's all melted. So I'm going to bring in this new product from Stepping Up, which is called Gilded Flakes. Now these are awesome and you can use them a number of ways. So we're just going to use them this way and I'll show you another way in a little, little while. Now they sort of explode. I've managed to keep it reasonably contained. So what you want to do is you're going to sprinkle some gilded flakes all over this and press it lightly. So your heat and stick powder is a little bit sticky, right? And so the gilded flakes will stick to it. Now, it looks like a hot mess. Don't worry about it looking like a hot mess. All right. Now, this is sort of fun, but it's messy. And I'm just taking off the excess bits. You've got your heat and stick powders on there, so it's sort of stuck to everything. So don't get distressed about that. And I should have said, make sure you put your lid on and be prepared that it will stick everywhere and it'll go everywhere. Okay. But it's really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I'm just going to pop this back, the lid back on so it doesn't go too berserk. Oh, love it. Got gilded fingers. So now I'm just going to heat that up again. think that I've got it right. I've got gilded flakes all over the bench. I'm not really into getting messy, but I do think this is a bit fun. So look, I've got it everywhere. All right, so now I'm just gonna take a soft cloth.
wire, uh, paper towel, and put this in here. And just gently rub it. So you're going to rub that excess off, and you should see that it's some of the background. Remember how that dry brush was quite back and forth. You can see it's sort of sketching. So you've covered up a lot of that pattern that you didn't like, but it's sort of really quite luxurious looking now. And you can just see the traces of the pattern. So that's one way to do it, okay? So I'm looking forward to creating something with that. So let me just clean this up and I'll be right back. While we've got our gilded flakes out, um, I just wanted to show you another thing you can do. So if you cut your paper to maybe A4 or whatever fits in your printer, you can actually print on your paper. So I've just done this in black and um, you can print words and sayings and so this is done with a laser jet printer but you can print in um, with your inkjet and the reason I did it in a laser jet printer is because I was going to um, Put it through my foiling machine so my Heidi swap machine and this is what i did so i foiled it so it's so you could um there's a special foiling a special foil and it can go through a mink machine or a laminator and so that gives it a nice shiny finish but what i want to do with this one because it looks a little bit plain I'm going to um, put a bit of gilded flakes on it as well. Now this, again, this paper was from the um, Forever Fern Suite that was out last year. I like the other side, but I've used it so much that I'm tired of it. So I wanted to use the, uh, this side, which isn't my favorite. So I've got my multi-purpose glue. I've got glue all over it actually. And I'm just going to put a couple of bits of glue on it. And I'm gonna set that, you don't need too much. I'm just putting it around the edges randomly. You don't need too much. You are going to set it aside Got a little bit much there. Just wipe that off. It doesn't have to be gluggy. I'm just going to wipe it off, and um, I don't really like gluey fingers, but yeah, we're going to set it aside, and it'll become about half an hour. It'll become tacky. And then we're going to put some gilded leaf on it, the gilded flakes. So we'll just leave that there for now. Next thing we're going to look at is some more stamping. So I've got my ugly paper here. And you might not think it's ugly, but I do. And... I have got the stamp set that coordinates with that. So the garden butterfly. Okay. And I haven't even put this stamp set together. So I've got a um, embossing buddy. So I'm going to get my embossing buddy. 
Now this is retired. If you don't have one of these, use one of the anti-static dryer sheets or use a little bit of t-shirt material that's got some talcum powder in it. Okay, and I'm being really generous because I don't want any errant um, embossing powder, heat embossing powder. So, and look, I haven't practiced with any of these, so I am experimenting. Well, well, I've I've done the techniques before, but I haven't done them with this actual paper and this actual um, stamp set. So I've got my Versamark ink. I've inked all that up. Just put a bit more ink on. I've got my two dragonflies on the one block. So I'm stamping onto my pattern paper with the Versamark ink. Okay, just pressing it down firmly. And what I'm also going to do, I'll um, take one of them off and re-ink the other one and just put it down here. Because I always like three elements on my card. So, you can't even, I don't think you can even see, very faintly you might be able to see the Versamark ink. I've got some gold embossing powder here. So, I'm just going to grab my gold. it into the lid so that you can see it. I love these little spoons. Um, one of my friends used to fly a lot. Oh, I was going to say they make it a lot less messy but I've just made a big mess. Okay, one of my friends used to fly a lot and um, so she picked up these spoons on one of her Qantas flights and um, they are great for um, heat embossing. Now one of my other friends, she gave me some filter paper which I should have put down underneath here, or coffee filters, so yeah, okay. I can brush that up. All right. Okay, we'll put our lid back on our embossing powder. Just gonna grab a wipe and just wipe that excess off my um, paper. Like I've um, laminated this grid sheet so that um, it keeps it in reasonably good condition and I can just wipe it off. But you don't have to do that. Um, Alright, so I've got my embossing powder. I think it's everywhere I want it to be. We're going to heat emboss this and see how we go. Yeah, sorry about the noise. So there you go. You've, we've done this like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I still think it needs a little bit more work. So I'll just grab my ink pad and we're going to do some sponging. Hang on while I grab my ink pad. Okay, so we've got a Mossy Meadow ink pad. I've got my sponge drawer. 
Unfortunately, my mossy meadow sponge dauber has been used so much that it fell apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sponge a little bit. Just dauber and just start to colour it. So this might take a little while. It depends on how juicy your ink pad is as well and how dark you want to sponge it. So I'm not doing the wings as such, but I am doing over the body and the head. Now you could do a direct paper like um, we did with this one here. You could use your Mossy Meadow or whatever ink pad that you have to um, make it darker. So I'm just sponging it just to give it that sort of, you can still, it's still got hints of blue, but it's not as vibrant because I want those um, dragonflies to be the main event. So there we go. And I want around the edges to be darker. And the corners to be darker. Okay. And what you can do is if you want the very, very edges to be really dark, you grab your ink pad and you hold your paper up on the end like that. And you, or you just run it through your ink pad like that. So we're running it through. And my ink pad's a bit worse for wear because it gets used um, for classes and some of them, uh, like it's got fingernail marks on it and all sorts of things. So, because it took me a long time to work out how to open my ink pads properly and how to close them properly. So there we go. So we've just... And I probably will cut this down a bit. So I'm going to put a bit more ink down the bottom like that. See, so it's sponged. It's got a direct-to-paper. But you can see those lovely dragonflies. So... And it just... The sponging softens the look of the paper. Our little piece of um, cut that we put our glue on is nice, nice and tacky now. So what we're going to do is just get, and you might want to use tweezers for this. I don't have mine on hand, so I'm just going to use my fingers. And I, like, I like to store it in the container with the lid so I can just tip it on back in. So I'm just going to put my gold leaf around the edge where I think I put my glue. And you can see where you've put your glue. Um, and you'll notice I'm using a lot more than what I probably need. But the little bits will go back in the container when I've finished. You don't want to be tearing it off or anything. You just want to be putting this along here so that it's...
just sticking to your um, glue. Yeah. In crafting the world, I usually say less is more, but I don't know that you can do that with this gold leaf. It's really beautiful. So, so as I said before, the glue was quite tacky. So I'm just breaking off any excess bits. And we're gonna set that aside to dry. Okay, so you don't need to um, do anything else with it yet. Just set it aside and at the end of the video, I'll show you what to do with it. Okay. Right. And it's just random. It's not meant. Oh, I probably need some more bits there. It's not meant to be a perfect science. Now we're going to put our um, lid back on our flakes so they don't go everywhere. And we're going to just set this aside. Okay, and we'll come back to it. Glue is dry now. Well, I'm hoping it's dry. Yeah, it's been about an hour. So I'm just going to get a little piece of um, cloth. I'm just using a piece of Chuck's cloth here. Because um, I seem to have inherited a whole lot of Chuck's from my aunt. So, um, which I'm not complaining. So we're just going to gently rub the excess gilding off. Just gently and you'll see that wherever the glue wasn't, the gilding will stick. So this means that you can use the gilding or gil gilded leaf without having to heat emboss. And I don't think you can ever do less is more with this. So I'm pretty happy with that. And that's going to make a really nice little card for someone. Yeah, I probably got glue in a few spots I didn't want to. But it's pretty cool. Next up. We've got lots of ideas so far. What else can I show you? Oh, let's try some stenciling. or using decorative masks. I'll just wipe this off. So, again, I'm using a piece of paper that's not my favorite. Um, I'm gonna use this side this time. I've got a decorative mask, a stamping up one. You can use a stencil of any sort. Now, I will be cutting this down, so I'm not particularly worried. I've got a piece of washi tape at the top. What I'm going to do is just get some masking tape and just pop it on either side so that, not on the paper though, just on the mask itself. Like you could do this with a six by six piece of paper if you wanted to. And we're going to do a couple of different things with our mask. So this is the first one. And this is probably the easiest. So, I've got some old olive ink, so I've picked an ink that's in that paper. 
and you might think this is really awful but I'm just going to like we did before do a direct to paper and you need the masking tape to hold it down now each I'll show you a few different ways of inking these up so you um, get some different ideas and be able to have some fun with it so this is the easiest way it's probably not the most precise way but it certainly adds a bit of interest I'm just gonna wipe that excess off Ooh. all right as you can see you've got like a brick design it's not perfect but it's pretty cool so it just changes the paper got this one here so we're going to use a different design and what you can do which i'm not going to show you today you can actually stamp your put your mask on and st stamp over top of the mask that's pretty cool okay or you could stamp in the background whatever you like so got my masking tape we're going to pop this on as well i could have used the masking tape i had on the other one a little bit different so remember before we had our versamark ink okay. so we're going to grab that back again so what I need to do is just lift my mask for a second and I'm going to get let's take that off I'm going to get my embossing buddy and embossing buddy it all over it now this is a pretty cool technique so this is really good if you had some Christmas paper that you didn't actually like very much um, this one this decorative die which is in the mini current mini catalog it's a really great one for this all right so I've got my Versa mark I made sure my Versa mark is well inked just pressing it all over okay now this will be cut down to card front size so I'm not particularly worried you could cut it down first making sure that I've got lots of versa marking on this probably gone a bit berserk oh, look at that I've got two versa markings on my bench all right so now I'm gonna grab that gold embossing powder again take my mask off do it even more different we're gonna no we'll do it with gold first just grab that gold embossing powder and we're gonna just tip it see that there are some spots where I probably didn't get enough versa mark on it 
but that might add to it. So we're gonna experiment. As I said, these are an experiment with these papers. So, and I didn't use a spoon this time because um, I'm using so much of the gold. Make sure it's all over. And quite a few of my stamping friends have bought these masks recently. And I think that they're going to have a lot of fun with this. Because they're always complaining about, well, how do you use up that ugly paper? So this is one way they can use their products that they have. And I'm just going to tip that back in there. Alright. a wipe off. Alright, there we go. to do some heat embossing. Okay. Let's get to this. So, as you can see, it's going to quickly change colour. Now you don't want to overheat your embossing powder. Now depending on how well you ink it up is how well the embossing powder sticks. So as you can see now, your um, gold is your highlight of your thing. And I don't really mind that it's the lines aren't exactly even. I think that that is quite clever. Okay, so like before, remember we heat embossed in gold with it using our mask. I've done this one in clear embossing powder. And so it's clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Mossy Meadow ink pad and I'm just going to do a direct to paper technique. So I'm just inking. Now don't freak out, just um, be really, really generous, almost oversaturate it. Yes, they're probably thinking, why on earth would you do that? So the clear embossing powder, what that does is it allows for the background to show through. But then when you're inking, and we're inking a lot you see you're getting these really dark lines now i do admit when i um clear embossed that i forgot to use my anti-static embossing body so i um and i wasn't particularly careful because 
I was going for a vintage sort of a look. So then, I'm going to grab our trusty paper towel or whatever it is you're using. I'm just going to wipe it. And you'll see that it's sort of like a... Where you've inked is... Um, hidden and the other bits aren't so it's quite cute and so you use the best section of it and it'll make a great little background on a card it's just something different to do with those stencils or decorative masks whatever you would like to call them so that's going to be fun to play with I think that I like that and I can go back and I can add more ink where I don't think it's dark enough I don't think it's dark enough there um, and it's lots of fun and of course it's a bit messy so I've got purple on one hand and green on the other. So by the time this is over, I'm going to be a real mess, aren't I? So yeah, so we're wiping it. So what? why we're wiping it is we're wiping it off the embossed bits. We've got that nice, really nice shiny, and you can feel the texture of the embossing powder against it. It's really quite cool. All right, so while we've got our stencils out, let's have a look at what else we can do. So we've talked about um, embossing. We've talked about just doing it with ink. So how about we get out some embossing paste? Now, I'm going to show you two things with this. So again, I'm going to get my little mask out. So this is from the, actually, yeah. This is from the mini catalog, I believe. I have to go back and have a look. But look, you can use any. using this one for a particular reason and so you want to make sure you don't cover up the pattern so Stamping Up has two types of what they call embossing paste now other companies market it under a different name it might be texture paste i'm just going to wash my hands I've run. Now with your texture paste or embossing paste, so Stamping Up has a shimmery white and it has a white. So when you get it, keep the foil on it. All right, just peel the foil off a little bit. So you see that's just a plain white. I don't know if you can see that very well. And the shimmery white, I've only opened the foil a little bit, it's got, I don't know if you can see it, it's got glitter in it and it's really pretty. Anyway, so I'm just going to use a plain one to start with and I'm going to show you a little trick with that. So I use it with the stamping up um, tools 
I've got three. Oh, this one's not a stamping up one, but these two are. Um, they come in a pack of three. So, and what I always say when you're using this paste is less is more. So you're going to start out with just the tiniest bit because you don't want to waste it. I'm just going to press it all over. And the reason I only use the tiniest bit because it's um, a bit of a, a bit difficult to get it off your um, mask if you use too much or your stencil if you use too much so we're just using a little bit now embossing paste you don't have to use it with a stencil so if you had stamped some Christmas trees or a Christmas scene you could use little streaks of embossing paste to make snow now the thing is you do not have to heat this for it to set you can let it air dry okay so what you want to do is make sure that every part of that mask is covered i'm only doing half of it at this stage because i'm going to show you something super cool well i think it's super cool anyway And I see I haven't got too much excess. I've made sure it's nice and smooth. Now when you're finished with your mask, you just put it in some warm soapy water. Now don't worry about this bit over here um, where it's gone over the edge. Now. Now I'm going to show you that you can colour this embossing paste. Now the easiest way to colour it is one of, with one of these little mini Ziploc bags. Sorry. So the easiest way to colour it is with one of these little mini Ziploc bags. So you're just going to take a little spatula hunk, and that's probably a bit too much. We're just going to pop it in our Ziploc bag. Then I've got my Calypso Coral Reinker, which is the same colour ink that's used in the background. So we're going to pop that a couple of dots of that in the Ziploc bag in the thing. Now the reason I do it this way is because I don't want to get ink all over my fingers. And you're just going to massage that together. And see it's changing colour. Now you can after you've um, after the embossing paste has dried, you can actually sponge it and change the colour. You can use it with, um, in, while it's wet, you can use it with embossing powder. Um, but we're just going to use it this way. So, And I'm okay that it's going to be a bit streaky. You, If you don't want it streaky, you don't have to have it streaky. And because I'm using a colour on this one, I um, want to put it on a bit thicker than I did the other time. 
But what I would normally do is you put it on and then wait for a little while while it sets and then you can add some more. That might, might be what we do today. And it's lots of fun. Like you can just make, so you can make the embossing powder any color that you like. And that is a really good thing when you're creating because it works um, perfectly with the Stamping Up Classic inks. Now, I don't know how it works with other inks because I haven't tried it. But I do know it works perfectly with the Stamping Up Classic inks. And that's all I use, so that's all I'm really worried about. Now... You have to make sure when you're using this embossing paste that you may seal the container really well. Um, it doesn't have, like it doesn't last forever. So if you're not using it, um, and you haven't sealed it well, it will just go rock hard and it'll be useless, okay? So. There you go, so you've got I'm just gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add some more. I'll scrape off this excess along the side. Actually, I won't even let it dry. I'm going to just make a little bit more. You don't want to put your um, coloured one or your coloured tool that you're using into your plastic bag, uh, into your um, embossing paste. Use a fresh one or use a wooden teaspoon or something like that. So make sure it's really sealed up tight. So again, I add a bit more, but a bit more vibrant. So you could do this on a piece of acetate or something like that. I just find that the little plastic bag makes it easier. As long as you get it far enough away from the Ziploc, which I didn't then. But hey, this is what not to do. And if you've got stuff left over when you've used a Ziploc bag, you can um, quite reasonably store it for a little while for your next project. I wouldn't store it for too long, but yeah. we're having lots of fun with this. And if it's streaky, that also can add to the effect. And you can put it on quite thick. Just depends on the look that you're going for. And I think it's quite therapeutic. I think I've got enough on there. I'm just going to pop my um, lid back on my ring anchor so I don't spill it everywhere because there's nothing worse than coral ink everywhere. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is now this is air drying. I'm just going to let it air dry for 
an hour or so and it should be set if you wanted to speed the process up you can um, this is one I did earlier and you'll see that one of the some of the stencil is really smooth and that's where it was air dried but if you add your heat tool on a low setting or even on a high setting it bubbles up it puffs up and so this one is one I did earlier and see it just makes it look different so that'll be something that we can play with later on all right so while we're also on stencils let's do another So you can see I've done this one here with a, um, I don't actually hate this paper, I really like it, but um, I don't like the bees on the other side. So I've done that just with um, ink to give it a bit more interest. So I've got another stencil here or decorative mask here got my tape and sometimes what you need to do is with your masking tape you can use washi tape whatever you want to use if you're using a masking tape make sure you use a, a gentle sort of a one that's not going to rip your paper which is what happened with one of my earlier ones. So this one here, I've lined it up on my grid paper. I'm going to get my masking tape and put it at the top. Put it at the bottom. So I'm going to put it on all four sides. I'm covering up a bit of the end because I know that I'm going to trim it down to the right size. This is just a piece of scrap that I had. And I've got my Mossy Meadow ink again. That seems to be having a lot of um, airplay today. And I've got my blending brush. So this is um, this is one that I've used a lot. Just clean it off a bit. And you can wash these under water, or you just clean it off on a piece of cloth. Now these are like the make makeup brushes, but the bristles are much closer together because it's a bit higher quality than those makeup brushes you get from Kmart. Okay, so we're just going to tap it and we're going to blend it. Now how much you blend it and how much ink you add is completely up to you. So this is just another demonstration of how you can use ink with these masks on your pattern paper. You might hate it, and that's okay. As I said, this is a big experiment, this video. But it's, I just had so many ideas and I wanted to get them to you so that get you thinking about, well, what have you got and how can you use it? And you don't want to have those big stacks of paper that you're not using. And yeah, sure, the local school and the um, childcare centre and nursing home don't mind getting bits of paper, but they can only take so much. <laughs> so high school art departments always like icky paper, like paper they can use as well. So don't forget about them. Don't think it's just for the little kids. They do collages and all sorts of things. So, okay, 
So I've only lightly done that and you can, oh, so how about we explain this blending brush? So you just tap it and you just circle and you should get nice smooth. So for some people, this is a bit easier than the sponge dauber. Because like when you use a sponge dauber, you sometimes get little marks. And so we don't want, want those. Let's take this off. Okay. So, I've only done that a little bit. And it's not my favourite, but what you can do is just get another colour and do another pattern over the top of it, or you could stamp. So, yeah. So there's lots of ideas to do with that. So you could get... Actually, let's grab that. I'm just going to grab the Bumblebee ink. And just experiment a little bit. Maybe one moment. I'm just going to grab this dry brush set stamp that I used before and we'll see how this looks with some inking as well as um, as well as the masking. I mean, it could look terrible, but just wait and see. And I threw out my piece of scrap paper because it was a bit dirty. So. so let's see. So that changes it again. So. Just adds a bit of different texture to it. And because it's a stringy stamp, I'm going to do a bit more stamps, double stamp it. Doesn't really matter. So, yeah, it's got lots of texture there now. So, again, covers a lot of it up. So we'll see what we can make with that. That's a bit of a challenge, that one. We'll start with the easiest one, and that's just the die cutting. So we're going to get our little mini stamping emboss machine. I'm going to grab a piece, our um, base plate. Then our, one of our clear plates, which is plate two. I'm going to grab our other plate two. I've got my die. Now, this is, I'm going to use this piece of paper because it's longer. Now, this is something, a little trick. Well, there's two little tricks to this. Because I want the cut edges to be nice and dark, I'm going to grab my ink right, and 
and my thing that I'm just going to press the cutting edge of the die really lightly into my ink pad. So when it cuts, it's going to have ink. Um, I'll see if this works because I haven't done this with this machine. So what I, normally when you would cut, you would cut with your cutting edge down. But when you're using an intricate die, what I want to do is I'm going to put it on upside down, right? So it's upside down like that and you move it around. You're not going to, you don't want to cut in the same place every single time because that's what causes your plates to bow. I'm going to put my pattern paper with the side that I want the ink on, on top of it. So the cutting blade is up. And then we're going to pop this on. Right. Now, this is a bit of a tough one. And I'm going to move it closer to me. And it's sliding on my thing. Now, so because you move, have the cutting blade up, it actually takes out more of your little cut bits than it would. And I don't think that you can actually see. No, I mustn't have inked it enough. But you can. So there you go. So I didn't ink it enough, but you can do that if you wanted to. All right. So next thing we're going to do. So this is going to look really lovely on a card. So you've got your pattern paper. It's got some interesting designs in it and it's die cut. Really good way to use pattern paper. I've got this one here. I want to just emboss it. Not, nothing groundbreaking about that, is it? So I'm again using my little mini. Now you want to have, because this is a checked one, you want to have it nice and straight. Okay. So for your embossing plate, so you put your embossing fibers in hinge first. So you have your number one plate. You have your embossing folder hinge first. Now you need to make sure that it's the way that you want it. And I think this is. So now we're just going to pop this in. And that's not an ultra thick embossing folder, so we're going to use platform three because it's quite a thin embossing folder. Okay, not four. Okay, I'm just going to move it over here so I can emboss it so it doesn't slide around everywhere. Okay, so. Well, this wasn't the ugliest paper, it, you've added some extra dimension to, to it. So you could die cut that, you can use it as a background, you can use it at all sorts of things. Okay. So what if we took that same embossing paper, that pad, embossing folder, and a similar paper, and we wanted to add some colour to it. So let's get a little ink pad here. Move this out of the way for a second. A bit 
messy at the moment. I've got all bits of pieces everywhere. So I'm just going to get my ink pad and just press it on. Now I've got some ink where I don't want it. Just wipe that again. Get a new um, baby wipe and wipe that off. Now I'm going for a grungy sort of a look. So I'm just pressing this down. Don't press it too hard so that it goes where you don't want it. Okay. Okay, so you'll see all the raised bits are where you want it. So. I'm just going to close that up, put my paper on and close that up. Being really careful not to move my paper and not to press too hard. Bring in my embossing machine. And just pop it through. Now I only use the classic inks to do this. I don't use any of those pigment inks because I don't want to stain my folder. And look, you've got a nice checkerboard pattern, but it's also got some stripes in it. So that's a little bit different to before, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to stamp this one three times. Or twice, whatever. Stamping it three times, okay. So I've stamped it three times. I've just got the zinc out of the way. So now so I'm not going to use this as a feature piece, but what I am going to use it for is um, a nice background piece. So I'm using the same set of embossing folders but this time I'm going to use some dots. Now I just showed you the um, technique with the inked embossing folder so I'm going to use that again. So you don't, but you don't have to. You could just do dots if you wanted. Okay, so I've got ink everywhere, but that's all right. So, we only want the dots, so the raised, so we're only putting the ink on the raised bits. Now, if you're not comfortable using the ink pad directly on your um, embossing folder, just use a sponge or something like that. So this is really an experiment. And I don't mind that along the edges, I might have um, mushed it a little bit, because I want it to be sort of, I put way too much ink there. And I've done that deliberately. So I'm gonna get my little piece of paper, lay it down, and I'm not worried that this one's not straight. Hold it firmly, bring back in my little mini 
cutting tool, pop this folder in so it's nice and firm. Oh, I've done this the wrong way around. How about we do it the right way? One on the bottom, then your embossing folder hinge side in first, and then one on the top. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Mm, not too bad. You can just see the pattern, but it's just a bit different, isn't it? I'm just showing you there's different ways you can do things. Let's try. That same piece of cardstock or pattern paper. Let's try it with the same ink. All right. Let's see how we go. I should have used a bigger block so make sure you use the right block for that's the right size for your stamp okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this embossing folder but instead of using the raised bits here going to use this side and we're going to ink that up let's see what happens let's lay that on it's probably a bit wide this piece of paper I don't carefully So we've got number one, then our embossing folder, then number three plate. I love these plates that they tell you what you need to do. So you push it in. I'll just move it a bit closer to me. Sorry, it'll be out of camera range. Now, you need to make sure when you're embossing that you're actually staggering the edges of your plates. So let's see what this looks like. Now, this is an experiment, as I said. Let's see. So there you go. So you've got dots, but you've got, they're raised and they're just a bit different. I might struggle with making something with that, but hey, we'll give it. Okay, let's have a look at another way to um, use that paper that you think is ugly or it's not your favourite. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Um, I've got some adhesive sheets here. And so what I have done is I've cut out a few shapes from the um, Tidings and Trimmings bundle. So these are the stars from that. And I've cut them out in the adhesive sheets. And I'm just going to take off the backing paper. And it leaves a little sticky thing. I should have my um, picker thing here. So I'm taking off the backing paper and you can't really see where the backing paper is. Now, because this is a really intricate die, it does um, cut your adhesive sheet all the way through. So 
Um, it make, does make it a little bit tricky. You sort of got to jigsaw it together when it's a die like this one. If it was a nice solid shape, it'd be much easier. Now, I've taken that off and I don't know if you can very faintly see the shape of the stars. So what I'm going to do is get out my trusty gold foil again and I'm just going to lay the sheets over just nice and gently and I'll stick to the adhesive, what well, I should do. I haven't done this before, so this is an experiment um, of epic nature. And we're just going to stick them on. And it's not going to be a nice, crisp um, shape, I can tell you that now, because the adhesive um, was difficult to get on. But it's all about changing the look of your background paper, right? It's not about it being perfect. Okay. So it looks a bit of a hot mess there. We'll just flake off some of that. And try and get, not get it, this um, gilded for, gilded leaf everywhere. But see this one I hadn't cut properly and it's um, not where I want it to be. Um, I'm not an expert with the gilded foil but you can see that it's got a bit of a star shape up the top it's got some well it's got a random shape down here that must have been where I used part of a thing but you get the idea all right and so there so I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and then I'm going to take a a cloth and um, just gently wipe it over and wipe off any of the excess and it is messy that's the only problem with this gilded foil it's so messy but it does look good um, and as I said it was an experiment I think that the um, Adhesive sheets work much better if they are not a, um, if it's not a really intricate die. I've just got my little cloth here. I'm just going to wipe off bits. And I'm okay that it's not perfect. I'm quite okay with that because the whole purpose is to change the look of the background. Okay, and I can trim that up if there's a bit that I don't like and still make it look good. So but you'll see the finished card, how it looks. So keeping that sort of theory in mind about sticking stuff, I had another piece of paper which I've done the same thing to but what I want to do is actually see if this adhesive sheet stuff heat foils. And I don't know whether it does. So this is definitely an experiment. So I'm just peeling off the um, backing paper, which has been sitting there. I'll just make sure it's all stuck down. Yep. Been sitting there. For a little while and like I know that some of the stars are wonky shapes and again some of that's going to be covered up so I'm not precious about it the whole thing is to change the look of the background so And whether this works or not, it's a whole other thing. Well, fingers crossed. All right, so I have got some Heidi Swap um, foil, 
which this is their Christmas one. So I've got a bit of green because I saw red and green and it's Christmassy. I'm just going to lay that foil down. I haven't laid it very straight, but it'll do because I'm going to trim this down anyway. Now just grab my machine, which I've had heating up. Now, if you don't have a Heidi Swap machine, you could use the laminator or um, something like that. Um, I've got a carrier sheet, which I put, I always put baking paper inside just so it doesn't wreck my carrier sheet. So I've got my foil on. Let's give it a go. We'll just feed it through. And I've got that a three setting. I don't know if this is the right setting. I don't know anything. Let's a play to find out if this will work to um, change the look of your background. Yeah, sorry, it takes a little while to get through. So there's a whole heap of colours of this foil that you can get. I normally just get mine from Spotlight or Amazon. There are other types of foil on the market and I don't know about those. So um, I don't know what's good, what's not. I just know that this is the one that I was introduced to and so I play with that. And Heidi Swap's got a very big following, so I just figure she must be doing something right and people like Tim Holtz partner with her, so... Um, yeah, I thought I could give it a go. Alright, so our oil has gone through. And we're going to lift it off and it may or may not work so just and even if it works just partially it changes the look so it wasn't completely successful it's sort of like an abstracty pattern but it could be it could um, serve a purpose Okay, so I'm going to still make a card with that, but it won't quite be the card that I first thought I was going to make. And I'll show you the card at the end of the video. Okay, next up. Oh, we've got our mink machine out. We're, um, I've been given this new product and it's not a stamping up product and it's called Heidi Swap Toner Ink. And it comes with this little ink paddy thing that's uninked. And apparently you're supposed to put um, about 15 mils of ink on this. Now I don't know how this will work with a um, photopolymer stamp. So I'm using one of my old rubber stamps that I'm not too worried about if it, um, you know, doesn't work properly. Now I've watched a few videos about this toner ink and one of the ones from Tim Holtz. Oh, this is a stamp set I'm using and it's the best of Christmas. And this was a 25th anniversary set, which I've kept for all these years. So I've got, just got a little scrap now Tim Holtz, when he does his, he uses a rubber brayer. So that's what we're going to use. And he uses that to put the ink on the stamp. I don't know how well that's going to work. But he doesn't actually put it on the ink pad. He puts it... Let's just do it how he does it in the video. He puts it on... 
a bit of cloth or something. So I've got a piece of baking paper down here. Now this brayer, that sponge brayer, oh sorry, rubber brayer that I have, I bought it especially for the purpose of using this toner ink. Now part of the reason for using toner ink is the foil, I'll just stamp it and see if it works. The foil um, is supposed to react with the ink. Now I might have a bit much on there. Just wipe a little bit off and and so this is the first time I've used it, so this is just giving you ways to think about how you might use your supplies that you have at home to change the look of your background, you know, your paper that you don't particularly like, so that you can use it. So let's just do a much lighter. See how this goes. Gonna go. So I'm not really worried if the words don't come out. I just want the shape because it's not designed to have to be for thin, intricate words. It's designed to sort of be a bit bulky. Okay. Two. That's quite sticky. And we're wanting it to dry a little bit. Because we want the toner to to dry and um, just make sure that it's got something to attach to. Okay, so it doesn't take very long to dry. Oh, and it, the paper does stick a bit. That's okay. We'll see how this goes. As I said, all an experiment. While I'm just waiting for that to dry, I'm going to wipe it off with my baby wipe and then I'm going to clean it with my um, stamping mist to condition it because I don't know what effect the toner ink is gonna have on the um, the stamp. It looks it came off pretty cool good or well. Pretty good, pretty well. Oh, my mum would be horrified about my English. I'm just gonna wipe the excess off. Now there's lots of videos on how to clean up afterwards and um I'm just playing, so we'll see. And because I wanted a quite a um, rustic look from this paper. So this time, instead of using a red, I'm going to use um, this champagne foil. Um, so it's not quite gold, it's not quite... Um, yeah, it's not really anything. It's a nice colour though. It's quite a subtle colour. So I'm just going to get rid of these out of the way. So, 
it cleans up fairly well but I do recommend you put some sort of other um, backing paper down I wouldn't put it directly on your work surface okay so again we're going to grab our carrier sheet I think that might be dry enough if it's not well that's okay too we'll find out I know that when you use glue and when you use some of the other ID swap stuff it has to be completely dry so I've just put my um, Heidi Swap foil over the top. Shove it in my carrier sheet. I wish I had a little carrier sheet. I need to get another one and cut it down. Right, so I've got my baking paper just to make sure that no wayward foil gets anywhere and we're just going to go feed it in like that now fingers crossed this could be a total disaster but it doesn't matter really because again if I wasn't experimenting with this paper it would be sitting there doing nothing so at least if it's I've experimented with it and it um doesn't work I haven't really lost anything but if it works and I've gained something and gained something that I'll use then that's even better right so while we're waiting for that to go through I'll show you a couple of other ideas um, of how to use that not so favorite paper one of my favorites is this one now this is a retired set but I've just got a piece of vellum and I've put it over the top so that if you look at this it completely changes the look of your paper so it just makes it nice and subtle so if there's something that you've got that's too bright the vellum over the top is the way to go okay the other thing that I did was I cut my um, three different types of cardstock into random, oh, three different types of paper into random strips and on an angle. They're, most of them are a quarter of an inch at one end, some are a little bit bigger. And I've just um, made what they call a strippy card. And so this, I've matched up the pattern of each one, but can see it doesn't look like one big piece of paper it adds a little bit of interest and fun and you can't really see the pattern keeping on that theme I then had half inch strips of paper and so I've sort of weaved them together to make this um, and I've made sure the pattern stays in order to make this um, sort of basket weave card that was quite easy and it's, it almost looks like a little mosaic -y thing um, the next thing I did is I had some gesso or um, you could use that was watered down or you could use some white acrylic paint and you just water it down to a wash and so that just took the brightness and the harshness of my little envelope that I made and yeah making envelopes is always good another good way to use up that paper so I didn't like this paper at all so but I knew that I had a few little cards that would fit in this this is a bit wonky inside like it's not straight so I'm sorry about that other thing is to um, cut some squares so um, you might remember we did the um, embossing paste and so I've cut out some different squares scraps and just pop them together so 
it's a good way to use your paper without um, having a big chunk of it. So just use it in little sections. Now, this one is another different way. So I have got my got a punch, a dragonfly punch, and I have punched out lots of little dragonflies. I've had some little circles that have dragonflies on them, all different shapes, and I've made a shaker card. And this is a really good way to use up that paper that you don't particularly like, but is really colorful and it saves you on using some of your sequins and yeah so it's a really great little shaker card okay so now our um zinc thing is finished let's see how it looks and i might not have used the right stamp so as i said i haven't done this before but you can still see that that's sort of a really rustic um they are a really rustic sort of a um what do you call them i don't even know what you call them they're upside down the rustic sort of ornament so i think that i can use that um yeah we know that ones with words aren't going to work so well but that's okay like it um, still looks different to the original paper. So I'll finish these cards off and then I'll show you all the card, different things that we made or I made using those um, different techniques and then you can have a good look at them and decide which ones you want to use.